Where the hell have you been? You know, around. Yeah, I feel that. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode three of the, the sauce. Not the Sunday sauce. The sauce. The regular sauce. The regular sauce. Tyler Dell alongside Andrew Mikari. We cannot thank you enough for spending your Tuesday, this frozen frenzy Tuesday with us today. Oh, yeah. It's a big. It's probably the most exciting day of hockey starting in about an hour from now starting with uh the capitals and flyers we're gonna we're gonna get into all of our picks in a little bit uh we cannot thank the black cats enough for their new hit signal signorina streaming loud on all music streaming platforms spotify apple music pandora youtube music and youtube Available for download and streaming now. So before we jump into Frozen Frenzy, because that's going to take up hmm, most, if not all, of our time today. Yeah. We didn't have an episode Thursday. <clears throat> so we didn't have anything nice to say about the Devils and the Maple Leafs. So we Don't have go to for it. We got to start there. And then we can start by probably burying them in both of our parlays in about five minutes. <laughs> so starting off with the Devils, they have 11 points. Look it's that. a nice thing to say. That's a very nice thing to say. Because 11 points is apparently a good thing. 11 more than zero. 11 more than zero. Maple Leafs was a tough one because they started to get a little hot since the last time we spoke about them Tuesday. Yep. But I know as an Islander fan myself and a Ranger fan yourself, the one thing we can both say is a positive thing about the Maple Leafs is they beat the Lightning on Monday. Yeah. So if there's anything good that Toronto's ever going to do, it's beat the Lightning. Correct. Um. In all honesty, maybe we were a little too friendly to both of them this week. So next week we might have to tone it down a little bit. Maybe even Thursday, you know, there's plenty of room for error between now and Thursday. Let's just put it yeah. that way. Oh, yes. So Frozen Frenzy is here. It's here early, like yeah, really early. Um, and it's the only one this year, too, which is even more concerning. Um all 16 teams play today. Games starting at 6 p.m. Uh, I shamelessly stole this graphic from ESPN. Um, you mean you didn't make that? I did not make this. Oh, if wow. you th Listen, if you think I could make this, <laughs> you're giving me a little too much credit. Um, 16 games tonight, all starting at 6 p.m. And then starting fifteen in 15-minute 15 intervals from the start of the game behind it. That's dumb. I hate that. Um, I honestly couldn't agree with you more. <laughs> like red zone works so well because they all start at the same time. It's to me, it's just kind of like, yeah, all right. We both know this. All right, if a game starts at seven, you know, you got the anthem, you got yeah. this and that. And it's like game really doesn't start till seven ten. Yeah, that's where baseball gets it right, and they, that's why they mark their first pitches at like seven oh eight. So, like, if you're going to put out a parlay tonight on, like, the the opening face-off for every game, this is the best day of your life. Yes. Because you're going to tune into Capitals Flyers, you're going to see the opening face-off, and you're immediately going to jump to the 6-15 game. Rinse yeah. and repeat. Yep. I think the biggest gap in times from games tonight is between 10-15 <clears throat> and 11. It's about a 45-minute layover. So, the Sharks and Ducks – with some hilarious irony, is going to get <laughs> the most time between games. So you, if you're going to actually tap into this entire Frozen Frenzy day, you're going to get stuck with 45 minutes of Ducks and Sharks. Which I think most East Coast viewers by that time will have uh, gotten ready off. for the work yeah. day. Yeah. <laughs> um, so being the degenerates that we are, there's no way we could absolutely we, we couldn't not have some type of a parlay here in have our to do it. 
in our personal lives. Um, so, in a in a sense, this is going to be a little bit of a, a hybrid episode. It's going to be a lot of league talk, and it's just going to be one large frozen parlay. And it's we're going to have a great time, and we're going to be freaking millionaires after the, today. Uh, let's let's not get carried away here. Sorry, multi thousand errors. I only put five bucks on it, but you know what? I put five on it too. Um, there were two games I didn't touch. I know we spoke about it off camera a little bit, um, but there was two games that I wouldn't touch um, for the sake of just those will be the two games that ruined my night. Uh, <laughs> so. Listen, let's just start from the top and work our way down. We're starting off with Capitals and Flyers in Philly. <sighs> kind of had to take the Capitals for this one. They're rolling with a little momentum. The Flyers are just not good. Yeah, uh, neither team is very good. Um, and for me, when neither team is very good and the odds are so close, I defer to the home team. So I took Philadelphia. That's very fair. This could go. This is probably going to be like a six to five game in overtime. Unless Tortorella pulls the goalie halfway through the third period. Man, I really hope he doesn't do that in October. Man, I definitely <laughs> put it past him. You're right. Uh, after that, six at the 630 mark, we jump right into Wild visiting the Panthers. I think the Panthers are the uh, pretty overwhelmingly easy pick for this one. Yeah, and even their odds don't show it. They're only minus 148 on uh, ESPN bet, but that, that's good for us. That's, I also took the Panthers. That's great for us. Um, yeah, listen, obviously the Panthers are the Panthers. Uh, they're going to be not fun to play against again. Ever. Ever. In the wild, they're playing a little above their uh, their league right now. Oh, call it as it is. It's, it, it's overachieving. Yeah, they haven't um, lost in regulation yet. And it's tonight. Lost, yeah, they haven't lost in regulation yet. They're sitting at 3-0-2. Um, a po- listen, the positive that you take away from that uh, is obviously that they're, they've are they walked away from every game this year with the point so far. Yep. Um, again, Minnesota overachieving, uh, most definitely. Mm-hmm. But, and we'll get back into it in a little bit, <laughs> for the moment you could also consider Utah being extreme overachieving. <laughs> Um, but again, this is also what happens when you get legitimate front office people and a legitimate owner and people who want to spend money and like, and like winning. Yeah. I mean, listen, I, I don't want to get off on a tangent right now, but that central division is freaking that central division rocker right now is going to probably be a lot more of a crap shoot than we thought it was going to be. You have, you have a five and zero Winnipeg Jets who have given up eight goals in five games. And an 0 and 5 National Predators. Well, and that's the best part about this, too, is that two of the teams that we had had in our predictions as borderline locks to make the playoffs are sitting legitimately 7 and 8. Yes, uh, in the so bad. It's not great. <laughs> it's not a good time to be predicting stuff. That's why they play the games, folks. Uh, moving on to the next game. Uh, oh, boy. Mm. Uh, the 645 puck drop, Tampa Bay Lightning on the back, on the second end of their doubleheader playing uh, the red people in New Jersey. Yeah, give me New Jersey, and that's all I'll say about it. Yeah, that's all I'm going to say about it, too. Give me the Devils. Uh, yeah. You know what? This is what we say about it. The Lightning played last night, and they are probably very sleepy. Correct. Did, uh, what's his name? Vasilevsky start last night? Vasilevsky got pulled last night. Oh. Oh, yeah. What Pretty happened? Sure that, uh, well, Toronto was up 4-1, and Vasilevsky got the uh, guy yanked. Oh, yeah, he gave up four goals in the second period? Uh, I believe that, yeah. yeah he, he gave up oh. four goals on, 10 shot, on 14 shots. Like a very not Vasilevsky game. Yeah, that'll do uh, it. And then obviously all the memes going around today because uh, I, I didn't catch who it was at the red line during warmups, but he gave somebody a pretty sizable snow shower. Oh, baby. And then 29 real time minutes uh, after hmm. that, he was brought right back on the bench. 
All right, so both their goalies are a little uh, tired. Good. Yes, both goalies are tired, and I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. Vasilevsky is supposed to start again tonight. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that, brother. Uh, he is no, he's not. Ex he's not expected to start tonight. But seeing that he got pulled pretty early yesterday, I could also see it. He could. Yeah. Okay. Uh, moving to the next game, the seven o'clock puck drop. We're looking at Star Sabers. Uh, I don't want to say enough said here because that's kind of just mean to the Sabers. We like the Sabers. They're just not. They're they're slowly molding into the Buffalo Coyotes as far as they're going. <laughs> Um, yep. but I, listen, the obvious pick, give me, give me the stars. Yeah. I mean, Jake Ottinger is playing out of his mind. He's playing out of his mind. Um, the entire stars team is playing just, as banged up as they are. They're as banged up as well. they are. Yeah. Um, to be, again, that's a no brainer. Yep. Um, Rangers Canadians tonight, the seven fifteen puck drop Rangers visiting Montreal. Um, in a weird way, I kind of feel like this is a, a like a how do I how do I put this? It's like a weird game where Montreal has had a really good offense, yeah, for the last couple games, and win or lose, I could see them at at minimum forcing an overtime game out of you. Um, I still think you win no matter what, so I I, I have the Rangers for this one. Um, I think like. Like everything else, it's kind of again, it's the year of all eyes are on your goaltending. Yeah, like if he has another game like Utah, you're boned. Well, yeah, it's a whole, but I mean, I can't, I don't see that happening. Uh, the Rangers typically don't play well in Montreal, but it's, I don't think it's gonna matter. Well, that's yeah, that's the yeah. other thing, too. Um, I don't think it's gonna be, it's gonna be closer. It's not gonna be like the Rangers are minus 205. I don't think it's gonna be, um, that. Heavy, but they're they're gonna win. Are you exclusively doing this parlay through ESPN? Uh, I just have the NHL's website up. Who uses ESPN's odds? Oh, okay, I have. Uh, okay, FanDuel has Rangers minus two ten. Yeah, okay, yeah, no, my actual parlay is placed on FanDuel. But then again, I also locked in this parlay last night. The odds could have. Yeah, so did, so did, so did I. Oh, okay. Um, moving forward after that, we're looking at uh, Toronto and Columbus. Um, Nicest way I could possibly say this. I don't really care if the Maple Leafs played a back to back. They have no excuse to lose this game. Yeah, no. I mean, it would be very Toronto to lose this game, but they're not going. Well, it'd be very Toronto to get blown out of this game. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I just I, I don't I, I don't see it because Columbus again they're already back to their bottom feeding ways. Seventh in the Metro, two two three and zero, oh, four points. Um. Which it's it's mind blowing that that puts them in a points tie with Carolina. But <laughs> that, that's a another conversation for another day. Again, both of our predictions are just out the window. Yeah, and also um, Austin Matthews remembered how to put the puck in the net. So, yeah, that's also not a good thing. Um, <laughs> playing Toronto. Um. So yeah, I'm taking Toronto for this one. Yep. Same here. Seven forty-five, which is a start time. That will be the bane of my existence for the day. Um, Detroit Red Wings coming to UBS Arena to see the Islanders. Uh, kind of one of those 50 50 games, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, I have a lot more, and I guess this will also be part of our local coverage today. Um, I have a lot more confidence going into the game seeing Sorokin in the net. Mm. Um, I feel like right now Varlamov is in a position where he couldn't – I, I believe I said it last week, he couldn't stop the moon if you shot it at him. Um, Sorokin, he, to me, I, again, in the in the Colorado game, in the Dallas – in the St. Louis game, excuse me, uh, granted still losing the St. Louis game in overtime, one nothing. Um, he looks like the, uh, the Sorokin that was out there two years ago, and that's a very good thing. Yeah. Um, losing Duclair, not great. Nope. Um, I don't just calling up uh, Liam Foodie today. Um, uh, okay. <laughs> I, I don't know how much that helps you. Um, I probably shouldn't have touched this one because the Islanders are going into the game as the favorite, and I don't like yeah. that. But Detroit's also struggling, so I, I do. I, I'm going to stay loyal here. I took the Islanders. 
I I respect that pick. I went to Detroit only because I think the Islanders take a lead and then blow it in typical Islander fashion. That's totally fair. It can go either way. I, I think I, it's going to go to overtime. I'm totally okay with that. I'm not offended. <laughs> uh, it's funny. I actually saw a uh, a graphic the other day. Like yeah. a picture. Uh, it was one of those like charts with uh, – it was like – Good expectations, good start, low expectations, bad start. One of those yeah. things. The Islanders were legitimately dead center of that graphic, and I was like, "Yeah, that's pretty accurate." Actually, there was no expectations, and the the start is mid. Yeah, that, I agree. Again, they're somehow pulling points out of every game they're playing. Hey, man, uh, whatever works. Jets and Blues for the eight o'clock game. Um, again, this feels like the easy one. You would think, you know how bad I wanted to pick the Blues just because the Jets are undefeated? Like they got to lose at some point. I didn't. I picked the Jets, but. They have to lose at some point. I just don't think St. Louis is going to be the team they lose to. <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not going to be today. Um. Yeah, I, yeah, I, the Jets, it's the. It's the Jets. Like it's it's not again. St. Louis is. It's just not the team that's going to bury them. It is. It is the Jets. Um, this game probably delayed me sinking in my parlay for a solid ten minutes. <laughs> um, uh, Colorado Avalanche, Seattle Kraken. Um, this one actually took a pretty solid mental toll on me. Um, because they're both not great. They're both. It, it's just hard to look at Colorado and like want to pick against them because yeah. Well, you look at them and you go, "Who are you?" Yeah, it's it's like one of those like "Who are you's," but at the same time, it's also like it's also Colorado. They can turn around, win ten straight, and really nobody's going to question it. Correct. Um, so I'm looking. I'm still going to look Seattle on this one because I also think Georgiev is not playing his strongest hockey right now. Like by no, he's bad. The imagination, <laughs> he's awful right he's now. He's straight up bad. Uh, and the Kraken are just like they're finding new life in themselves every game. They are. That's so. They are. I, I like Seattle here, even though Colorado does go into this game somehow as the favorite. So. I am going Colorado. Uh, I don't like you. Um, <laughs> Give me Colorado. Listen, you, you and I both know underdog picks are what pay you. So all it I takes have... is Georgiev to have a lukewarm game and they win this game. You're not. You're probably not wrong. Nathan no, McKinnon I'm... will win this game as long as Georgiev can stop a beach ball. Yeah, I mean you're not wrong. It's just I what think what happened. Who knows? Yeah, and also oddly enough, Seattle's kind of not a fun place to play as a road team, supposedly. <laughs> so yeah, well, that's a whole other thing. Yeah, that's a whole. That's an, an entire other video. Uh eight forty-five. Again, these start times are killing. Excuse me. me, sir. I know you didn't bet on it. You skipped the game. Oh, Chicago, Vancouver. Give me Chicago. Listen, I'm I'm literally I'm literally, I'm not even looking at the schedule. I'm legitimately just feeding off of my parlay. Line. Yeah, no, yeah. Eight fifteen, Chicago, Vancouver. Give me the Blackhawks. Okay. Even though I didn't parlay it, I'm gonna say I'm gonna pull it up really quick right here. I'm going to say you're a crazy person. I figured you would. And I'm going to take Vancouver. Um, and because this game bothered me so much to begin with, um, the only research I'm going to do in here is they're going to tell me that their goalie, Langanen, is 2-0-1. And, and they're and Vancouver's the favorites going into it. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do what the gambling man tells me. <laughs> and tells me that Vancouver is the favorite to win. Correct. So give me, like you said, underdogs pay. Give uh, me Chicago. 
in I'm bed listen, seaweed I'm tray, trust. and I'm sure in a month from now, listen, in, in, a, in a month from now, when, when Chicago is still walking through as an underdog and Bedard and Tara Vinen have really locked it in together, people are going to make money off the Blackhawks. Also, Morozik and Soderblom are having decent seasons. Both have a sub three goals against average. You're not wrong. Um, but 2 0 and 1 is, it also just sounds nicer than 2 and 2. So Gotta lose at some point, baby. I don't disagree with you. Give me Chicago. I think you're a crazy person. Show me the um, movie, Chicago. Boston Nashville was really interesting to pick. That's that's one word to describe it. Yep. Because I don't know what the odds were when you locked in. Um. Uh, I have Nashville at minus one thirty. I have them at minus 126. I'm more just blown away at the fact that you can have an 0-5 team going into a game as a favorite <clears throat> against quite possibly a legitimate, like, playoff heavy hitter. Yeah, pedigree, baby. And you're so you're telling me that the 0-5 Predators are the favorites over the 3-2-1 Boston Bruins? Like... I don't want to sound like a conspiracy guy here, but what do you know? <laughs> like, what all do you we, know that we don't? Well, all I'm saying is the logic that brought me to uh, Chicago, you got to lose at some point. You got to win at some point. No, listen, I, I, you're playing in Nashville. Uh, UC Saros is, for lack of better terms at this point, dying for a win. Yep. Um, I could see Boston going into this game a little overconfident. I could see them making plenty of mental errors <clears throat> that essentially throw this game completely off course for them. Yeah. Um, it's just one of those things where, like I said, it's it, if it seems too good to be true, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like even picking the favorite here, I feel like I'm going against the line. Like I feel like they're just they're showing everybody this bo these Boston odds and saying here, free money. Yeah, honestly, um, they, no, it's not an easy game. But you know what's crazy? Nashville's zero and five, and four of those games are home games. That's actually kind of disgusting. <sighs> it's it's awful. Because like, it wasn't there the NHLPA player poll that voted uh, Bridgestone as like. One of the top two arenas that was almost I think number one. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, I'm really showing it. But either way, I'm gonna, I'm going to take Nashville on this one because, like I said, it's it's very odd to be owned five and coming into a game as a favorite, so they know something. Just a theory. Vegas knows. Um. Again, this is another game that should be. A lot harder to pick than it actually is, but also has no business being considered a dumpster fire game. Carolina <laughs> taking on Edmonton for the nine o'clock start. Yeah, this um, tough. Both teams sitting at the bottom of their respective divisions, which again, listen, we both know Edmonton does this every year. They they're in like sixth or seventh in the division. They yep. win a hundred straight games. Yep. Um, so if you're an Oiler fan, or you you know you, like you're not panicking, being down in the standings, like this is legitimately your mo. You do this every year. Correct. Um, Carolina, on the other hand, this is not particularly your mo. Nope. Something's on fire. They're bad. The, Carol, the Carolina Hurricanes are a mediocre hockey team. They they are. Can I tell you a secret that? Sure. Nobody on YouTube will even know. <laughs> Go for it. They've been pretty mid through this entire little run they're having. Yeah. Um. Now, listen, don't get me wrong. If they and, – and this is no hate on Frederick Anderson here. But if they had a goalie, not including this season, but if they had a goalie the last four or five seasons, not named Frederick Anderson, who didn't spend half or more <laughs> of the season on the IR – Carolina probably makes a cup final, if not wins at least one cup. 
there's a good chance, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, you think about 2018-19, right? Yep. Uh, that playoff <clears throat> drove me mildly insane. <clears throat> we come out, we sweep Pittsburgh, being the Islanders. Carolina sweeps us. Okay? Yep. Boston sweeps them. Cup final goes to seven games. Yeah. I hated everything about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because if I remember, I could be wrong, but I feel like that year, was that the year when Ovechkin knocked out, what's his name, in the first round of the playoffs in, Car- in Car- versus Carolina in a fight? I want to feel like he he got into a he he dropped the gloves with like Svechnikov or something and he and he knocked them clean out. That I was going to say Svechnikov. He might have. I don't remember. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up just because. Well, you do that. You know, I think Carolina and Edmonton are tied for 31st in goals for. That's not great. <laughs> They're tied with San Jose. And then the only team with less goals for them than them is Nashville. They've only scored 12 goals in six games. <laughs> I'm sorry, 40. 40. Um, okay, just so you know. Yeah. Um, not only was that the playoff series, and that was the fight of Ashkin versus Veshnikov. Mm-hmm. I was in game one of that series. Oh um, I don't know how we got here. But the point <laughs> being is that Carolina, with all credit given to them, they've had plenty of opportunity in the last five years to do it. Yes. They've had weak, they've had weak goaltending. I said it when they made the trade, and I'm sticking by it. That Brent Burns trade is going to kill that team. Uh, yeah, 100%. I completely uh, agree. And not from a player standpoint, Brent Bird still brings a decent amount to the table for quite literally whatever team he's playing for. But it's the money. Yeah. And and listen, a lot of these teams obviously mm-hmm. took a little bit of a beating through COVID. And by yeah. a lot, I mean every team. Um, where contracts that probably shouldn't be considered bad contracts – are coming off as bad contracts because the cap right now is not in a spot where it should have been had there not been the cap freeze. Yes. Um, Cause if, you know, don't forget right now where we are um, had, had we not had the cap freeze and had everything mm-hmm. been business as usual, the, the NHL cap right now would be well over a hundred million dollars. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, so again, a contract like Brent Burns, a contract like Eric Carlson's, a contract, uh, I'll even stab myself on the chest here, a contract like John Gabriel Pajot, those contracts don't look terrible if the cap moves consistently where it goes. Yeah, uh, that's that's fair. I mean, because, listen, you're, you're talking about, listen, in five years from now, we're going to be looking at fourth-line players who are going to be making 4 or $5 million as a base and it's going to be like, hey, that doesn't seem right. And it's like, oh, because the first line guy's making 20. Yeah. Um, which, don't get me wrong, great for the sport. Um, it's about time hockey players are treated like, you know, yeah. real athletes. Yeah. Um, but where the cap currently sits, that Brent Burns contract absolutely <laughs> hammers that team. Yeah, it's atrocious. And, um, that was a problem. They had so many free agents leave this year. The teams just they, they're they're bad. Like Brady Shea's gone. Their high their leading scorer right now is Shane Gostisbeer. That's tough. Their top three goal scorers are Shane Gostisbeer, Jack Roslovic, and Jackson Blake. I'm sorry. Who? Yeah, exactly. Sebastian Ajo has one goal. I've never heard of I don't know who Jackson Blake is. Would you say Jason Blake? Jackson Blake. Oh, Jackson Blake. I was going to say, last time I heard Jason. Okay, Jackson Blake. Yeah. Any relation <laughs> to Jason Blake? 
I doubt it. No, that's a real question. Uh, Google, help me out. All right, let's parlay it. I, I bet you a dollar that he is. Jesus Christ. Uh, yes, this is definitely Jason Blake. Yep, that's I was kid. I, dude, I saw his elite prospects profile. I was like, that's his yeah, kid. Yeah, this picture's bad on the NHL website. Shame on you, NHL. Um, Brent Burns saving has zero points and is a minus three. I want to point that out, too. I'm going to point something out also, too, that even though it doesn't necessarily help his case or help the case of the Hurricanes, um, because I'm looking at Puckpedia now, not sponsored by Puckpedia, of course. Ooh, a new one. Uh, RIP cat friendly. <laughs> um, I will pull this up because I have no, um, I have no standards here. <laughs> um, we forgot that San Jose ate a pretty solid chunk of that contract. No, did they? Um, so Brent Burns is only getting paid five point two from oh. Carolina. Okay, that's a lot better. Which, again, not great, but eek. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, listen. Getting back to the actual pick part. Listen, I'm just. I, I we had to fill a little bit of time here. We're going a little too <laughs> quick. Um, going back to the actual <laughs> pick part. Um. I don't think Edmonton wins. I think Edmonton absolutely manhandles this team. I, I think yes. that's I'm going f- here. I, I listen. I'm going exact score. I'm going five two Oilers tonight. Oh wow! Look at this guy. This guy wants to get paid, but I, no, I agree. Edmonton's going to win this game. Like you almost can't. Not you almost can't not win. Uh yeah. No. Uh, Connor McDavid, make it happen. Bring me the money. Okay, Ottawa Senators, Utah Hockey Club. Again, kind of a hard game to pick because the Senators are the Senators. But Utah has the chance to completely go full Coyotes at any minute. They do, but they won't. Give they, they, that's, that was my selling point to myself is they, they can, they could, they're probably not. Um. Because also, let's be real here, too. The way this new Utah front office ownership regime has kind of approached the game quite literally since day one. And I mean literally day one, they made a trade. Yep. Um, If there's a problem, if there's a hole in the game, they're going to fix it. And they're going to fix it quick. They're going to, like I said a couple weeks ago, they're going to make the playoffs. This is a good hockey team. I want them to make the playoffs. Me too. There's so many likable guys on this team. It's not even about being likable guys. I mean, you know, we can uh, we can throw Sergachev into to a river and forget about him. I don't care about that guy. Well, he made yeah. he made my life miserable for two yeah, years. Yeah, aside from um, But no, like there's like, and a lot of their risk rewards are paying off, like borderline immediately. Yes. Like, you're gonna tell me your eyebrows didn't blow through your ceiling when Dylan Gunther got paid the what he got paid. 100%. And now he's got and six he's, points in six games. He's their leading scorer, I think. Uh, no, Clint Keller is. Well, he's their leading goal scorer, yes. Okay, that makes sense. So Utah, to me, is the safe one here. Like, it's, yeah. it, it seems harder to pick than it actually is. And, and I'm sure other people might agree, might not agree. Uh, shameless plug to let it, let us know in the comments if you agree because we haven't done one of those yet. Um, it's it, it's going to take a while for Utah to drop that Coyotes stigma attached to them. Yeah. And I understand it, but this is also like I, – I don't know. And I, I'm going to be honest with you too while we're on the topic of Utah real quick. Mm-hmm. Under no circumstances should they ever change that name. <laughs> well, when they change it to the freaking Yeti or whatever, you can listen, talk to management. Listen, I'll accept the Yeti if they do change it, but Utah Hockey Club is just so different and so not what we're used to that it makes it perfect. Yeah, I mean, I I like it. I'm a 
I'm a big soccer fan, so it's just a typical soccer name. So I'm used to that kind of stuff. That's what I'm saying. It's it it, it has that soccer name feel to it, I, I, and you know, for a pretty bland logo that you can kind of see in the top right, right below our logo, it, it's kind of a nice logo. It's kind of the 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 teal, the baby blue teal is just really good. It's a good. No, color. it pops. It's a good color. Um, and I'll never get it bet against my boy Clayton Keller. So, Penguins Flames was not easy to pick either. I hate that game. That that game I hate it because I, again, as of last night, FanDuel had this game as a push, and I was like, "Well, that's not fun." I don't even remember who I took. I have to pull my FanDuel back up. I took Calgary. I think I did too. Um, because they're home. Yeah, I, I did took, because they're home. I took Calgary because they're home and because of the old, the the old saying from a from a wise old man that Tristan Jari is not a starving goaltender. <laughs> um, which my was my logic until I locked in the parlay and saw that uh, Nedeljkovic is starting tonight. Oh. But if Tristan Jari is not a starting goaltender, no, this guy is not a starting goaltender either. Um, I also think that Calgary has a lot more to play for right now. Yeah, I get that. Um, so I just think I, I, I also think uh, with Dustin Wolf being in net for them tonight, two and oh, 202 goals against and a nine forty four save. Yeah, I feel like he's going to ride that hot streak a little bit longer. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. Um, the second of two games that I refuse to touch in my parlay. Um, Sharks, Ducks, and everybody loses this one. Like this game, there's going to be eight people in the stands. <laughs> And half of that number is actually going to watch TV. Yeah, but you know what? There's blood, uh, how in, the about water. This? There's blood in the water, Tyler. Give me the Sharks. First win of the season. No more winless teams after tonight. That's so tough to pick because Blackwood has been so bad to start the season. God, he's been abysmal, but every a blind squirrel finds a nut every now and again. Yeah, but it's a blind squirrel. It could also find a landmine. <laughs> hey, listen. 50-50 shot. <laughs> I mean... Oh. Uh. The Sharks. The, the, I think... Like obviously it was against a much better team, but Anaheim's whoever their last game was against, they they got like twelve shots on goal the whole game. You know what? I'm choosing violence today. Give me the sharks. <laughs> There's blood in the water, baby. There's blood in the water. And then, what should be a much better game than it's going to be, just because the Kings are getting. Decimated in the injury department, losing yeah, Kemper really. and Drew Doughty still. Um, wrapping up the night, 11 o'clock, which again, that is a brutal start time. Um, Kings, Golden Knights. Um, hey, listen, playoff, playoffs start today. It's, a, it's two playoff teams going at it. Yeah. Somehow. Um, yeah. I like Vegas here. So do I. Um, obviously, for a few reasons. One, playing in Vegas. Um, an 8 o'clock start time in Vegas. Obviously, 8, eight o'clock there, 11 o'clock here. Yep. Um, gives everybody in Vegas a chance to get a little sauce before the game. No shameless plug intended. Um, I'll be next week, baby. That building is going to be bananas tonight. Rocking that eight o'clock, an eight o'clock Tuesday game in in a city where there's no standards to begin with. That that place is going to be booming. My favorite um, city in the world. And Vegas is just—they're one of those teams where they're almost untouchable at home. 
Yeah, because the away teams always come in and get drunk the night the night before. Yeah, they get drunk, lose. <laughs> How are you, you going to go play a hockey game after you lost a couple grand on blackjack? It usually comes with an instigating penalty. Or, <laughs> uh, exactly. Or, you know, depending on, uh, you know, not exactly Vegas, but you lose a few hands of blackjack and then you get sent all the way to <laughs> double A ball if you're uh, someone. This is true. Is someone from the Nationals organization, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, Vegas to me is like it's again they're, they're, they're shoe in here. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, they're one of the handful of teams in the NHL, really one of the hand, handful of teams in sports where home ice, home field means everything. Yeah, it's a tough building to play in. So you've locked in your parlay. I've locked in my parlay. Yes, sir. Now, if my parlay hits. Um, five grand. I'm. Uh, we're, we're getting a new studio, buddy. <laughs> yeah, if mine hits, uh, it's about fifty-eight. Yeah. Uh, I do also have two other side bets going. Oh, there's um, probably some weird specials today. I gotta look at. Well, uh, there's on FanDuel. There's specials all over the place. Yeah, I figure. Um, I put a sixty-minute correct score bet in on the Islander game. Which was probably really stupid. Um, four to five. And what's that? Wait, sixty minute. The sixty minute score. Three to three. See, I put four two. Same number of goals. Just gotta go the right way for you. And then, oh well, my other bet's baseball related, so I'm probably not gonna get into that one too much. But uh, <laughs> which, uh, by the way. Uh, Hell of a playoff run. Yeah, I know it. It it hurt, but I now now the the dust has cleared and I can look back on a fun season. Well, listen, you for for the way your team started, all it took was a was a purple booger. And look Hell what yeah! Look what happened. All it took little was Grimace, a, little Hawk Tua. All, little, all it uh, took was the fast food big show to come save you. And our second baseman to turn into a pop star. Yeah, you know what? It's <laughs> funny that the guy who's actually on your team could be the afterthought in all of the shenanigans. Yeah, happened. right. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I picked I, I, I Yankees in five. As I think this, I think the World Series is going seven, no matter what. I have Game One going to the Yankees, Game Two to the Dodgers, and then the Yankees sweeping it out at home. Wow, it's oh, a yeah. confident boy right there. Well. You want to know my honest opinion? Sure. The The Padres pushed the Dodgers to the literal last inning of the division. This Even is the Mets, when you guys were, you know, playing well through the series, not that you yeah. didn't play well the whole series, but your, your pitching yeah. kind of collapsed those last two games. Um, like, if... I don't know how to say this, but if the Mets and the Padres were almost able to throw these guys out of the playoffs, theoretically speaking, the Yankees should be able to bounce them pretty quickly. You, you would think there. Listen, there's absolutely factors to consider. Um, one factor being, obviously, neither one of us know what the World Series rosters look like yet. Um, also true. That's, that's probably the biggest factor. Um, Obviously, like, I don't want to get too too much into baseball, but, you know, like, Freddie Freeman did not play the last two games of the NLCS. Yeah. So, like, if for whatever reason he doesn't make the playoff roster because he's legitimately injured or something or, like, really can't play. Yeah. Like, that's huge if you're the Yankees. Yes, it does. That's massive. That's massive. Um. Yes, obviously we all we all know Freddie Freeman's a great contact hitter. He hits, you know, he he's uh most nights guaranteed one for four, one for five, one yep. for three with a walk. Um you want to get as many lefty batters letting lefty bats out of that lineup as you can going into Yankee Stadium. We don't need to get into it. We both know why. Yeah. Um, but on the flip side, um Judge needs to pull his head out from the back of his pants. Correct. Um, John Carlos Stanton is 
I think actually legitimately got now. In the playoffs, yeah. Uh, listen, he uh, he could uh, he, he could redefine his Yankee career pretty quickly with a World Series win here. Oh, absolutely. Uh, listen, you get a World Series out of, you get a World Series win out of this. He's the ALCS MVP, and he somehow is the World Series MVP as well. Like he's he'll, he's going to go down as a god for the Yankees for the rest of his life. They've got him for six more years. Yeah, that's crazy. And it doesn't. And it, nothing he does for six more years is going to matter. No, it won't matter at all. Not even in the slightest. But before we get off on a complete tangent, because this is going to be a little bit of a shorter episode, like we said, um, between now and the next time we see each other on Thursday, Islanders are playing the Red Wings. They're off till Friday for a home for a road game with the Devils. And a home game with the Panthers. This is not a good week to be an Islander fan. Um, I go Islander win tonight. <clears throat> My pick will probably change by Thursday. <laughs> but I go Islander win on Friday with the Devils. And I go Islander lost Saturday with the Panthers. That will probably change. And I only pick the Islanders to beat the Devils because that's the game Sorokin will be in net four in the back-to-back. Yeah, that, that ends up. Um, which is sensible only because, again, we have to – listen, you're, the division games are the ones that come back to haunt you. Yeah. Your, your best guys got to play that game. Um, Rangers got the Canadians tonight. Rangers got the Panthers Thursday. Yep. And then you have the Ducks Saturday. So whenever you're ready to just tell me you're going 3 0 this week, just let me know. Yeah, they're going 3 0 this week. They're going to beat the Canadians. Florida, even though they're still Florida, their goaltending has not been good. Agree. And then it's Anaheim. I'll be at the game on Saturday. That'll be fun. I feel like I, whenever, I, feel like I go every year when they play the Ducks. It's weird. Yeah, it's you not do. on purpose. You do. But I've noticed it. It lined up. My birthday's on Sunday, so it lined up. So. I'm going to put you at two and one just because I, I want to give the pair. Of the, I got to give the Panthers a little bit of love here. Cause no, again, that's totally fair. Like everything else, something's got to give for them eventually. Um, I was, I was close to going two Oh and one, but I thought about it. Cause I was like, uh, I could see that going over time. Yeah. Um, That'll be a good game, but I just, that, that Florida defense and goaltending has just been not right. Good. But listen, if you, if you, uh, if you lose to the ducks, your season, your season's over. All right, relax. But also, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, hmm. Oh, that's odd. There's only one game tomorrow, too. Yeah, I mean, with everyone playing today. Yeah, and then they're gonna make they they're gonna make everybody sit through Flyers Capitals again. You know. Uh-huh. Which I think is hilarious because the three ESPN games tonight are Capitals Flyers. Yep. And then I believe, yeah, Colorado Seattle. Good game mm-hmm. to put on. Yeah. And then Kings Golden Knights. You know, it's funny because when I was looking at the original start times for everything, I saw, I was like, I wonder who the ten, uh, like the ten o'clock games, and I saw Sharks Ducks. I was like, "There's no way they put that that atrocity on ESPN." Outstanding, outstanding. It's not even like San Jose has Celebrini either. You know, it's also it's also kind of like, listen, the guy who makes the national broadcast schedule for the NHL, I'm pretty yeah. sure is the same guy doing it for the NFL. Yeah. Um, because their national broadcast schedule has been brutal this year. I don't know if you've noticed. It's been terrible. Um, but hey, listen, I get to watch the Giants get smoked on Thanksgiving again. So, Did you see the fun little stat that all three tri-state area hockey teams have scored more recently at MetLife Stadium than Daniel Jones?
Yeah, that's where we're at. Not a good time to be a Giants fan. I, I'd rather be a Giants fan than a Jets fan right now, though. At least you guys don't have expectations. He, you know, in a weird way, we kind of did. Well, you were expected to not be one of the worst teams in football. The Jets were expected to be a Super Bowl contender. Well, listen, we can we we can get it. We can start a new type of podcast and get into that. But this is the Jets are getting everything they deserve for putting all the eggs <laughs> of a forty-two year old man. <laughs> um, but listen, what do I know, right? Yeah, what do we know? All right, so we banged out the frozen parlay today. Uh, yeah, it's the second year in a row that I can't watch it. Yeah, yeah, you t- try working nights. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, it's... Listen, everybody enjoy the frozen parlay tonight. When you're sitting down, when you get ready for that six o'clock game of Capitals Flyers, which again, I'm really sorry if you're going to willingly sit through that. <laughs> um, but when you sit down, make sure you get yourself a nice snack, some milk and cookies. <laughs> Still, uh, we listen. We can make fun of it all we want. This is genius. Yeah, it's beautiful. But absolutely, <clears throat> still need a cup. Still, yeah, you still need a cup. To, <laughs> you still need a cup for the milk. Um, everybody, enjoy your frozen frenzy Tuesday. Tyler Dell alongside Andrew Micario. Again, we cannot thank you enough for spending your Tuesday with us. Signorina by the Black Cats. Download it now on Spotify, Apple Music, Pandora, and all other music streaming platforms. Until Thursday, we'll see you then. Sayonara.